one is going to be about manifesting greatness. You ready? By Julie Hiley and Jonathan Gregor. All right, I got it right. Join Julie and Jonathan for a collection of the best manifesting, manifesting strategies around to create the abundance in your life. Learn about mindset, books to help you on your journey, and hear healing stories. Julie Hiley is a diversified holistic healer who empowers her clients to live beyond their physical and mental limitations. Jonathan Gregorer, did I say it right? <laughs> Works to motivate and lead people through intuitive listening. Together, they inspire others to imagine and create extra, extraordinary realities. So give a round of applause for Hailey and Jonathan and Julie. <laughs> Did I say your last name? Really great. Thank you. That was challenging. <laughs> oh, thank you for showing up today. Um, we're going to start with a quick meditation, so as we get ready, if you'll just take a couple of big breaths in and out, and put everything in your lap on the floor, if you don't mind. As you go ahead and let the air come in through your nose and out through your mouth a couple of times. Now relax both hands in your lap and just begin to settle into an easy breathing pattern. This time noticing the air passing in and out through your nose. As you breathe in, breathe in calming energy. And as you breathe out, begin to relax your face. Relax your forehead, the back of your head, your eyes, your jaw, and your neck. With your next breath, let the calming energy relax your shoulders and your arms. your hands, and your fingers. Now relax your abdomen, and your chest, and your shoulders. With your next breath, bring the calming energy down deep into your body, and relax your hips, your thighs, relax your calves, your ankles, and your toes. Take in a deep breath and feel the peace and stillness of the relaxation of your entire body. Still in the deep relaxation, bring your awareness to your heart space. As you breathe in, see and feel a pink light entering your heart space as it awakens your heart with love, light, and clarity. Ask your heart, what is it you desire? Remember, desires come from the Latin, meaning this coming from the stars. And that recalling the desires of your heart means you're tapping into a higher source. Now take that desire and live into the reality of it being yours. Think about what it looks like, feels like, sounds like, 
smells like, tastes like. Engage all of your senses of this desire having manifested into your life. Now that you've been enjoying that in your heart space, let's send all of that information up to the brain, both to your conscious and your subconscious. Once it's there, ask the brain to send it into every cell of your body. Feel the energy and power of the desire of your heart spread, spread through every cell. Take a moment and express gratitude for this desire. Be grateful for your brain and your body's ability to incorporate it. Be grateful the desire exists. And be grateful to the universe for providing it. When you're ready, put a little movement in your fingers and toes and come back into this space. How many of you practice a regular meditation practice? Excellent. This was just one example of how to manifest things into your life. It's even a way to sort of decipher what it is you truly desire on the inside. When we are still and we remove all the clutter and chatter from our minds, we can begin to see and hear what it is we really truly need to know. We've created a handout and Jonathan's passing it out. On this paper, you'll notice there's space to write the desire that you just experienced in your heart. So take a few minutes to write about it. And then once you've done that, Take a few minutes and let's write some gratitude. Write about five things that you're thankful for, whether it's you've met some really fun people here, you had great traffic without the rain, or I, my personal one today is that it rained and then it stopped long enough to unload without being soaked today. So that's my personal gratitude for today. Um, doesn't have to be profound, it's just the act of being grateful. So go ahead and take a few minutes and we'll keep the music playing. And don't stress, just relax and write.
Now, the real reason for our talk today is to share some of our very favorite manifesting strategies. Some of them you may know, some of them may be new, and perhaps this whole idea of manifesting is a foreign language to you. So, what is manifesting? So manifesting is the art of creating the world around us. Um, and in reality, we don't actually even need to try to do this. We're always creating our reality, whether we're aware of it or not. Um, which can be a little bit surprising, um, because sometimes things work out really well, and we're not sure why. Sometimes things don't work out so well, and, and we don't know. But when we tune in to that we can be aware of this, then there's great power there. Um, Mike Dooley likes to say, thoughts become things, so choose the good ones. Um, so when we realize that we're bringing these things to ourselves, then we can take control and make sure that it's only the best things that are showing up. Um, and our hope is today to bring you on a journey and show you some outlets for being more proactive with what it is that you're creating um, and highlight some trouble spots that tend to trip us up. So the first strategy that we like to do um, is gratitude, which is why in addition to after you wrote down the desire of your heart, we went through gratitude. Gratitude's kind of like a big reset button for our life. Um, and when you sit and take time to write down five, ten things each day that you're grateful for, you start reorienting your mind towards that which is good around you. As you're thinking about just the five things, you inevitably come up with more, and then you have to focus it down into that. And so you start reframing your entire perspective towards looking at the good of any given situation. Then all of a sudden, if you're stuck at a traffic light, you realize it gave you more time to talk with that friend of yours who was actually really in crisis and needed to talk to you then. If the long line out the checkout stand um, took extra long because then when you left, you realized the accident on the tollway, and then you took a different way home, and so you didn't have to worry about being even perhaps in that accident. Um, you start then being able to be grateful and aware that you're being taken care of in ways that you're not even uh, conscious of, um, and so gratitude really helps bring that uh, joy and gratitude back to us. The next strategy then is um, being aware of our thoughts, um, because as our thoughts become things, um, it's important to focus on uh, what it is we're thinking. And the best way to focus on what we're thinking is what is it that we're saying. And so when you focus on what the words are, then you can focus on how you're controlling that. So if you've started taking a new weight loss product, for example, and you're telling your friends about it, how do you talk about that? Are you upbeat and optimistic, or are you oh yeah, I'm trying yet one more thing, we're going to see if it works. Are you already setting yourself up for that failure because you're not sure about it? Let's think about work. Are you going into that next work meeting that you have to go to thinking, if I have to sit through one more of these meetings, probably will be the end of me. Is the meeting then ever productive? Is it ever a good thing to sit through? Probably not because you've already set the intention then that it's going to be a, a worthless meeting. Um, because you don't want to be there yourself. And so if you change and if you start talking about things and focusing on how you're saying them in a positive light, that helps with your ability to manifest. So visualization is another great strategy in manifesting. And when I say that, I'm sure most of you have heard of vision boards or maybe that's one of the first things that came to your mind. So say, create a vision board. What does that mean? Say you want to move into a new house. Well, you can just blindly go into moving into a new house, or you can think about what you want that house to look like. What's the floor plan? What does the furniture look like in it? What color are the walls? Do I have hardwood floors or tile floors? You start getting specific about what you're imagining and put that in front of you on a vision board. Mine sits in front of my desk, so every day as I look up, it's what I see. And that's how I've used my vision board. Another visualization technique is the mind movie. And that's where we did kind of in that first meditation where we're seeing and feeling into what it is we desire. If you go into that and see it and feel it, taste it, experience it physically, that's another way for visualization to work. However, when you're visualizing that way, make sure that you're the one seeing it and you're not viewing it from a cinematic standpoint. If you're constantly viewing from a cinematic standpoint, it's constantly going to be out here and not here. Makes sense? Um, so, one of the very key things is to focus on how you're feeling. It's truly one of the most important parts about manifesting, feeling into it. Um, 
you have about 100 billion neurons in your brain. And we're going to get a little science, just a titch here. Well, about 100 billion. It's a lot. Your heart has about 40 million. Your gut also has its own set of neurons, about 80 million. So, if you think it here, feel it here, and experience it in your gut, that just exponentially sends the message out to the universe, I truly desire this from my head to my toe. Every cell of my body wants this. So what does this all mean? So certainly we can write things down as we did. In fact, the art of writing is sort of yet a more physical way for us to experience what it is that we want as opposed to just thinking gratitude to actually write it down is really important. But this feeling aspect um, is what's really important. Um, take the words thank you, for example. You can say thank you flatly, um, if it, which is the polite thing to do to say thank you if somebody holds the door open for you or something you're grateful for. But let's all just say thank you like it's a foreign language. Thank, thank you. you. But what does it feel like then if you actually experience the gratitude of that with saying thank you? So think about something right now uh, that maybe you wrote down on your sheet today about which you can feel abundantly grateful for. Feel that overwhelming sense of gratitude. And now with that gratitude in your heart, let's say thank you. Thank, thank you. you. So there's a big difference there, right? How you feel that, how you experience that becomes completely different. And that's the power of what we're talking about with feeling what it is that you want and when you desire. It just amps up the power of bringing things to yourself. Um, feeling is so important because if we think about it in the inverse, um, it's also important to realize the effect that can have. So if we take something like anger, anybody ever experience anger in their lives? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I want to talk to you after. Um, so anger creates such a sense of discord um, in the body that can be incredibly taxing. Um, now I think in general anger is a misplaced emotion that's generally covering um, what we're feeling, a survivalist tactic, if you will. So it's usually masking that we're afraid or we're scared or um, feeling insecure. And so we do that as a way to protect ourselves and to protect ourselves from others. Um, but that anger left unchecked ends up festering in the body and creates a number of diseases, um, which if you could see these notes, uh, we use disease spelled dis-ease, meaning the body is not at ease. Um, and it's not really a disease that's affecting you, it's really your body not being able to handle um, being ill at ease. Do any of you know who Louise Hay is or follow her readings and teachings? Yes. Okay. She is easily the mother of the entire self-healing, self-empowerment movement and for those of you who don't know, she was a therapist. She worked in San Francisco in the 80s when the AIDS epidemic, and she was one of the only safe places where AIDS patients had to go, and at the same time cured her own self of cancer. She changed how she was thinking about her body and how she was feeling, and she, as a therapist, people were coming into her, and she noticed there were thought patterns that they came in with, and there were dis-ease of the body that were showing up, and they were connected. So in her book, You Can Heal Your Life, there's a whole list of dis-ease, possible thought patterns, and then she did something, she created a new thought pattern that you can take to try to help your body heal the dis-ease that was beginning to happen. So one of her tenets is that we create every so-called illness in our body through how we feel, how we act subconsciously, and conscious beliefs we hold about ourselves, and what we hold about others. Now, this can be terrifying, right? Because the last thing we want to do is believe that we bring bad things into our lives. Um, in fact, it's sort of the hardest pill we have to swallow to acknowledge that. Um, but we have to be aware that it often means that we are being protected. As we talked about standing in line at the grocery store, that what feels unnatural in the moment is preparing us to be protected from something else. Think about even inspirational stories. What's kind of the common theme and thread of those? Something happened, they're feeling at the end of their rope, and then it was the worst day of their life, which all prompted this shift. They went on to do something completely different, being all the more grateful for what they had experienced. Or any number of quotes, it's always darkest before dawn. Um, anytime something feels the worst, in reality can bring something that you've always wanted after. Um, this meme that I saw the other day was about an arrow, actually, and it said, um, an arrow can only be shot by pulling it backwards. So when life is dragging you back with difficulties, 
it means it's going to launch you, launch you into something great. So just keep focusing and keep aiming. Now this does bring up a side tangent about expectations. Um, I think one of the main goals we all want is to be happy. Um, but expectations create actually a, a sense of discord for us. When we have expectations about people and situations, um, it only leads us to disappointment. If things don't turn out the way we want them to be, um, we're upset, or at least that's how my type A OCD personality uh, focuses <laughs> on all of that. Um, but it's made even worse, right, if all of these strategies we're talking about with manifesting that you're focusing on doing and you're like, but wait, this should turn out. I've, I've been doing all of this work. Um, why doesn't it? And so if you have no expectations, though, you can take life as it comes and focus on what you're perhaps being set up for. So now you ask. So I'm not allowed to expect anything, but how the hell am I supposed to manifest what I want in my life? Ah. Welcome. Namaste. Namaste. <laughs> so this is the first problem trap of manifesting. Um, you need to be detached to the outcome, which is really an interesting step to take. But it is allowing yourself to be open to what the universe is actually going to give you. Because when something doesn't turn out like you want it to be, it's very likely you've been given a gift and you just don't know what that gift is yet. And of course you may not know what it is, it might be a deterrent. So just thank the universe and say next, please. Additionally, um, sometimes it means being willing to acknowledge that it didn't work out because of a different problem that exists. I mean, it's just the universe is here to take care of you, trust it. And it, op it opens the next troubleshooting part of manifesting. You have to leave room for the universe to do it like it wants to. Say. I want $15,000 and I want that to come from my job, please, as a bonus. Great, you want $15,000, you've just tied the universe's hand by saying where it has to come from. So while it can happen and it can show up, it may take time. If you say, I need an extra $15,000 and I really don't care how it shows up. That allows the universe to do some magic and it may come to you in ways that you can't begin to imagine, but you are going to be taken care of. The details of how something gets done are really unimportant when it comes to manifesting. What is important is being clear about what you're feeling and about what you're thinking about what you want. So the fact is, is that we like to blame our surroundings and environment for all sorts of things. Um, I swear I have an advanced degree in <laughs> blaming things other than myself. Unfortunately, that's not really constructive, is it? Um, in so doing, we lose all control. We've given our power of being able to manifest away when we blame circumstances, situations, and people. So I think one of the main things to take away from this talk, if you don't take anything else, is that no one and no thing gets to be in charge of your happiness. In fact, I think I'd like all of us to say that together in the first person. No one and no thing gets to take away my happiness. No, no one, one and no, no thing gets, gets to, to take, take away from my, my happiness. happiness. Because it's an awful reality that no one deserves. That resentment that you're feeling uh, for people that have upset you, you just need to let them go. And of course, it's not for them, it's for you. Um, the quote that I've always loved about resentment is, um, resenting another person is like taking poison and expecting them to die. You're really only hurting yourself when you're holding on to something like that. Okay, so where were we? <laughs> happy thoughts. Let's go back to happy thoughts. Happy things. Happy, happy things. things. Yes. So manifesting. So what we've discussed so far is senses and being able to really feel what it is uh, you're, you're trying to manifest. Be able to see it. Be able to say it. Be able to write it out. Use vision boards. Play your movies. Uh, write out your gratitude. Feel that joy and gratitude. And then be aware of your thoughts. What is your unconscious mind doing to try to sabotage you? How do you speak about yourself when you talk to others? We're always our own worst critic, but we can be our best or worst creator. So if we're thinking those thoughts of ourselves, it only sends that out for others to think of us that way. There are countless resources out there to continue the talk on manifesting. And this, this 30 minutes or 25 minutes really just allows us to touch it. We don't even really scratch the surface of what's available. Um, some of our favorite books, we have a booth over here. We have a lot of our favorite books that we like to read. And so there's a list of it on the back of the guide we gave you. Come by the booth. I'm not selling you my books, but you can at least look at them and say, okay, I want to buy that for myself. 
They're also great resources for friends and families that may not quite be on this path yet with you, and it might just be a way to introduce them to manifesting great things into their world. Oh, we're also offering um, some things that we sell. Some things that we use in our life are at our booth. So, you know, we've got pendulums, we've got some incense, we've just the things we use in our daily life. So just come by and check us out. There's a couple of workshops that we'll be offering, one this fall and one in the spring. So if you're interested in doing some work with us, that would be great. As they said, I am an intuitive, holistic healer here in the Plano area. I work with groups. I also do one-on-one -on -one sessions. And Jonathan is honing his intuitive listening skills. And I'm telling you, he's incredible. And he's worth getting to know. He's just a great resource for you to have. I want to take a moment and have us close with what's at the bottom of uh, the handout on the front page. You'll notice a quote there by George Bernard Shaw. Uh, he was an Irish playwright, perhaps best known for uh, his work Pygmalion, which became the foundation for My Fair Lady. Um, he has a lot of great quotes, so you certainly should check him out. But this has become a favorite of ours, a mantra, if you will, and helpful for the manifesting journey. So if we could all read this together. Imagination, Imagination is, is the, the beginning, beginning of, of creation. creation. You, you imagine what you desire, desire. You, you will what you imagine, and at last you create what you will. Happy imagining. And creating. Thanks.